Hello and welcome at Epicenter 2017 CSGO and here with me is natural born killer Nathan Schmidt, also known as NBK from Team Not Envious, now G2 it's Sports. G2 Esports, <laughs> yes. So hello sir, how are you doing? Hey, good and you? So thank you, fine, nice to see you here. And first of all, just how do you feel before the tournament? Because that will be tight competition, lots of cool stuff, lots of cool teams. And have you prepared well enough? Um, I think it's going to be one of the toughest tournaments of the year. Um, I mean, all the games, best of three is with almost the top eight. I, I think it probably is the top eight best teams in the world that are here competing. Um, regarding preparation for our, our side, we wish we would have a bit more time or prepare a bit better, uh, a bit more efficient. But uh, I mean, we have to work with what we have and then uh, we need to come into the tournament rather confident, otherwise we're not going to make it very far. So. We're just going to play our A game, <laughs> if we have I mean, we're going to try to play our A game and then from there it's just game after game, map after map because uh, we feel that aside from FaZe that is a little bit ahead, uh, all the other teams are mostly on the same level so it's going to be the small things that are going to, going to make the difference. Well, looking back we can see that G2 Esports is again blooming, thriving and doing pretty well but speaking in general we have you, extremely consistent player and G2 Esports, team of talented players with a little bit inconsistency. Yeah. So what generally do you lack, a part of consistency definitely, so, yeah. to be definitely like the top team, the ultimate CSGO team? Um, I mean, regarding the fact that throughout the years, uh, the French team has been pretty similar in the sense that it always happened more or less the same. Um, it, is, it is to me more of a mentality thing of something that is within your blood that you have to um, change and tweak somehow. So like having the game 100% as a priority and always not going with your instinct and always just like staying to the basic of this is a team, we have to play for the team, etc. So if we can fix that on the long term, that's what we're trying to do with G2 Esports and that's why we are we sign long-term contracts so we have to stay together and work on it to see if we can lead somewhere and we can actually make something is to work on that so changing the the real deep side of uh, people within the team and to, and to try to get that consistency and, um, and that is something that is pretty hard to do uh, obviously to change how a person is thinking and how a person is so um, yeah it is a long-term project we're not there yet and uh, we're, we're becoming a bit more stable though like we, we managed to uh, not have lows that are as low as before and, and I think that's uh, that's one of the most important part if we can remove those lows and just focus on being average and high then that's already a very good start so that's what we're trying to do and um, and also we're changing our game style the leadership in some ways and uh, well what I especially like about your game style rather not just like the team in a whole but some specific players that you are not afraid of improvising yeah this high risk, high reward philosophy, but you know, in music, when you improvise, there is a certain structure like pentatonics yeah. that you build around all your moves. Sure, yeah. And what about CS? So is there any, let's just say, a secret code, a secret structure that you use to, oh, let's, just, let's play it this way or that way or improvise and all the other um, stuff? We generally have a basis of how the run is going to go and then all the rest is always up to improvise because a player uh, sometimes, I mean, some players are more free to use their instinct to, to do something, but we try to improvise as a team in general. So the way we improvise is more about, we know certain smokes and mollies and flashes, and then we work from that, and then we just try to construct something with it, uh, especially late in the round, because aside from that beginning of the round, middle of the round in general, we have our game plan, we know what we're doing, but then it's all up in the late stage of the round to actually improvise and do that. So there's nothing real crazy, we just work with the basis and try to put all the pieces together so we can end up in something good and, and not something average. That's why it's also uh, a bit hard to do it consistently because sometimes you're not going to have a good read, but most of the time I think it's a, it's a good way to, um, to actually work as a team and, and so everyone has to chip in and, and do something in order to, for the big piece to, to work very well. Okay, let's forget about the team and CSGO in general. So you have been playing for about 10 years in the competitive scene? Uh, competitive, seven, eight years, yeah. Well, competitive, yeah. Almost like 10 years. Almost 10. Get, get, getting okay. close to 10, getting yeah. close to 10, yeah. <laughs> so that's fine. So people usually change, the game changes yeah. as well. So sure. how different are you present from you in the past? Well, apart from the beard. <laughs> um, 
I think mostly about my impact within a team, in the sense that I was very focused on myself before. I think, I think game style-wise, I haven't changed that much. Uh, maybe I've learned to be a bit more aggressive, but um, I think in general, the way I approach the game and the way I, I see myself within the team uh, is roughly the same. Same game style, but um, I learned to have more impact in the team, to uh, work with other people a bit better, to, um, to put others uh, in, a, in a good position and, and do that work. And, uh, and especially recently, the past two years, I've been working um, with NVS Many for almost a year, uh, leading the city sides, and now I'm back to doing that now in G2. So that, that's mostly, I think, the difference, being able to see the game as a whole from a bigger point of view and being able to um, place the players where you want them to be and in order to win the round in, a, in, a, in an easier way than, than otherwise. So I think that that's my main difference. Okay, and what about personality-wise? Because during all these interactions with different yeah. people, somebody helps to shape you more than yeah. the others. So who, like your teammates, coaches, anyone, <laughs> who made the most impact on you um, as a person? I think, I think the, the person that gave me, luckily, the great mentality from the start was probably existence. Uh, I've been working with him for, I think, the first four years of my career. And, uh, and I mean, he's an he is an extremely hard worker, and he's never relying on uh, on luck or randomness or stuff like that. And um, and that's something I took from him from the very beginning, and that I carried on within all my teams in the future. And that's how I also managed to be that consistent, always staying within the the top teams in France, because uh, people were able to always knew that I was going to do the work no matter what happens, regardless of who we're playing with, etc. And uh, and. Yeah, that's something I, I took from him, and uh, and from there I I always try to I mean I stand true, true to myself, so believing in myself in the sense that I believe that I'm right most of the time, and um, and keeping that core. But then I'm always learning from anybody. Like it, it doesn't matter whether it is uh, a newcomer or a team that I never heard of before. It's all right. There's always something to learn, and so I'm just trying to keep that core of believing in my principles about Counter Strike and life in general, and then just taking what I can from anybody that is around me and, and I just try to move forward that way and not really think too much about, uh, about it or how I need to change, etc. Well, still, every person has, in order to balance all the other positive and negative stuff, we have things that we are afraid of. So what is your greatest fear as a pro gamer? Um, Let's put it this way. As a pro gamer, I, don't, uh, I believe that I don't really have a fear anymore as a pro gamer in the sense that, uh, like, yeah, I'm not really scared of fader. I'm not really scared of grabbing wins when it matters. I'm not scared of uh, talking to my teammates. I'm not scared to uh, attacking other players, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, as a player, I do not believe I have any fear anymore. So, life usually goes in different ways. You see some people have, let's just say, side chicks, and some pro gamers have side games to yeah. spend their time on. And what about you? Do you have any, let's just say, any other affair behind CSGO? Sure, yeah. I mean, first of all, video games. Uh, it is very hard for me when there are other video games that come out. For instance, uh, recently, for instance, there has been Shadow of War that came out. I, I, I killed the game as soon as I could. Uh, I spent like 25 hours in like four or five days in between practice, etc. <laughs> so I was, I was killing the game. There's Destiny 2 coming out that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna destroy as well when it's gonna come out. So it, it's. To me, it, it is hard to balance because it's like the same workplace, except that you have to balance between both. But I, mean, I make it work in the end, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, video games in general. Um, my girlfriend and my dog that uh, take a lot of time <laughs> out of the game. Uh, my car and then, you know, like more, more classic things. I like, guess just going to the restaurant well, and being since, with friends. Since you mentioned Shadow of War, just general question. This is bothering yeah. everyone. Loot boxes. Is this a problem? Um, when it, when it actually changed the gameplay, yes, because of the fact that it's mostly a single player. As, as a single player fact, I don't care. Like, why not? Sure. It doesn't really matter. Uh, multiplayer, if it really impacts the game, that's not the best. Not the best idea. Okay, and what about some other competitive shooters that they are on stage in a, like eSport discipline? Um, I do believe that the cases thing is great for revenue. In general, for the editors, I think it brings a lot of money to everybody that has that system integrated within uh, their game. Um, as, as long as it doesn't give any 
crazy advantage. Like the only thing, the only game I can think of that is a bit like that is Call of Duty, where it can give you special weapons, special uh, finishings of weapons. But that is that is to me the only um, problem in that sense. But one is just cosmetic. You know, it doesn't really matter. Like it, it's it's great for the persons that take the cases and want to open them. It's funny. Uh, on the other side, you have a cool weapon game, you enjoy it, and then it makes a lot of money to the game developers. So, I mean, sure, why not? Well, since you touched the subject of money, still nowadays there are lots of things that can be described as questionable. I mean, in Dota scene, in CSGO scene, so questionable decisions, questionable tournament stuff, and all the other things. So, what bothers you the most about the game that you love to play? and the scene that you really invested lots of effort into? Um, it's, it's, kind of, it's hard to have a, a fine balance, but in, in a general way, the involvement of Valve in Counter-Strike. Um, I think it is absolutely great to have Valve let the community do whatever they want, the tournament organizers, and them not really affecting anywhere aside from their roles in the major that is going to impact the whole ecosystem of the scene or the map that they implement, but in general it's not that big of a problem, like everybody can work with it. Um, the only thing that I would like is for them to have more following, for instance. Uh, more, most recently there has been the open qualifiers to the minor. Um, that has been <laughs> a real shit show and there has qualifier been... Qualifier for qualifier for yeah, another I mean, qualifier. Like, like the system, I think the system is pretty fine because it gives an opportunity to anybody to go there and to, to prove themselves. I think it's a great thing. What I don't think is great is for Valve to give the rights to um, an organization and then tell them you do you, and then we're just gonna watch what happened, and that's pretty much it. And uh, although it's not to that extent, they're probably not invested at zero percent, but um, I would like them to chip in a bit more um, in that sense to, to to put a bit more structure because they have more experience than any player that is here or at most of the tournament organizers. They can help in many ways, have the resources, they have everything, but they still like that little thing that would help just structure what is currently happening, at least for their tournament. And then from there, we can see where it goes in the future. But I would love to have them a bit more involved, let the power to the community, but have them more involved into, uh, into what is going on more this for at least their tournament. Well, hope that something will change <laughs> for the better. But still, there is one more question regarding the tournament. So yeah. who do you consider to be like the potentially top three teams of this tournament? Um, so FaZe has to go through the qualifier uh, facing Taidu. I do believe they're going to win, although I, wouldn't, I would not be surprised if it's a tight game. But um, I expect them to win. So definitely FaZe, uh, they are, they're on a crazy streak recently. Um, Astralis have been playing very good, coming here. And um, I would say SK, because coming in with Bolt, so of course they're going to lack practice. But the very first time they implemented FNX and I think it was Taco uh, at the very beginning of their conquest of the world, uh, it was at, uh, at Face It and, uh, and they won the tournament straight. So to me, it is not a real problem in the sense that I'm sure Bolt is going to fit the team very well. And, um, and so I expect them to be at least going through groups. Uh, although they have a, a tough one, I expect them to go through groups. And so, yeah, to me, that would be the they would be the top three teams, uh, the most interesting ones to, to watch. So, and before we let you go, would you like to give any shout outs? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> I can do that. Um, so, first of all, thanks to the people. We've already seen people here at the hotel and around uh, the Russian fans. Uh, we've had a very good encounter with them in Minsk that was back last year. So, thanks for your community and, uh, and what you're doing for us. And uh, yeah, thanks for the interview. Thank you, G2 Esports. And, uh, we're gonna try to do good. <laughs> We're gonna try to do good. So we hope to see that. We hope to see the best of you, and we wish G2 like the best of luck. Thank you and much. that was NBK from G2. Like again, G2, G2, more <laughs> G2. Yes. So you know what to do. You can see the button like with thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, dislike button is next over there. But I hope yeah, that you won't need it. So that was Nathan Schmidt. Thank we you. We wish you all the best, man. Thank, Thank you. you.